this word. And so let's, 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 let's go forth in this. But the word of God, we understand in terms of the kingdom of heaven. We know the word of God in John 14 and 6 says, Jesus told him, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. What we already understand about this is, is the way is the way to the kingdom of God. Uh, uh, the life is the consistent righteous life that we live. Hallelujah. And then the truth is in between the two. Uh, uh, the truth is the connection between the way and the life. Without the truth, you cannot find your way to the life God has designed for us. I'll say it a number of times uh, today that the kingdom of heaven uh, is, is the place that's designed for us and righteous living is the living that takes place inside the kingdom of heaven. And that is designed for everyone who chose life. If you choose life, you're choosing righteous living. That's what you're choosing when you choose life. You choose life, and he says, I, I said before you life and death, blessings and curses. If you choose life, you choose blessings. You automatically get blessings when you choose life. Your life is filled with blessings when you choose life. When you make the choice, you don't have to beg God to bless you. If you're begging God to bless you, you're not living the life. I'll let that sink in. I will let that sink in. If you have to beg God to bless you, you're not living the life that you chose. When you choose the life, it comes with blessings. When you choose the life, it comes with blessings. If you're in need to be blessed, that means you're not living the life you chose. You don't have to beg God to give you what he promised. He is not a man that he should lie. If he promised that he's going to give it. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. So the truth is connected between the way and the life. You cannot live kingdom life by altering the truth of the word of God. If you alter the truth of the word of God, you do not get the life that was promised and you find yourself begging to be blessed. If you live the life, you get the blessings because that's a choice that you made. You cannot make your truth compatible with God's word. If you do that, you do not get the life that was promised. Oh, amen, amen. Now, I want to look at this. I want to look at this truth. Uh, I, I just want to show you something that we operate in. And we operate in it as truth. And I want to show you how much it alters your life. Can, we, can, 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 can I do that for you today? Amen. Praise the Lord. And we're going to get into some more secrets of the kingdom of heaven. We're going to get into the most secrets. But I just want to show you something. Uh, people who operate with the, in, within the kingdom of heaven don't say or think God won't put more on me than I can bear. People who operate within the kingdom of heaven, if, 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 if it's such a tradition, you, you need to get that out of your head. You need to get that out of your mind. You need to get that away from your lips. And we're going to look, I want to look at that. Because I said the truth offers, uh, alters the life. The truth, uh, uh, you know, if you don't, if the truth gives you your way to the life. If you alter the truth, you alter the way to the life. That's what I'm saying. If you alter the truth, you alter the way to the life that's been promised to you. And so why? Why, why, why don't kingdom people uh, say, God won't put more on me uh, than I can bear? Well, though, uh, there's three reasons. There's three reasons uh, uh, that, that people in the kingdom of heaven don't say, God won't put more on me than I can bear. There's three reasons. The first reason that we know uh, already, we know that's not a scripture. That's the number one reason. Y'all already knew that. Y'all could have yelled that one out. You already knew. That's not a scripture. And that's not, so if it's not a scripture, it's not the truth. And if it's not the truth, then it can't lead you from the way to the life. You can, you can obey it, but it's, it's, it's not the truth. It's not the truth. And so let, let's, let's look. So, so two, two. So the first one, the first reason why kingdom people don't say it, don't say God won't put more on me then. Then, then I can bear, is because it's not even a scripture. You know, they, you got too much stuff in the Bible to be trying to follow than trying to follow a saying. Okay, the second thing is, we know that Jesus came to give us abundant life. We know this, right? John 10 and 10. The thief cometh not but for the steal, the kill, and destroy. I have come that they might have life, 
and that they might have it more abundantly. Abundant life is the life you live in the kingdom of heaven. Abundant life is where the blessings flow. Abundant life is where you, 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 you operate in the choice you made, the choice for life. Abundant life is a part of the choice for life. And so Jesus said, I came, you know, if, you, if Jesus said, I came to give them that, and, and, and Jesus is the choice you now make, because he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the life that you choose. So when you choose the life, you get abundant life. Well, abundant is providing more than a plentiful supply. Abundant is already giving you more than you can handle. Uh, 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 it, 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 it's some things of, of great quantity. Abundant, is, abundant life is more than you can handle or put up with without God in your life. But when you have God in your life, you can handle the abundance. Ooh, God, God, see, you know, it, it, you know a, a, a kingdom life is full, with, full of love. It is abundant love. You can't handle that abundance of love without God. You can't, ha you can't handle it outside of the kingdom. You can't love your neighbor. You can't love your enemy. You can't love those who, who, uh, uh, who, who, who despitefully use you and, and, and take your stuff. I mean, you can't love without the abundance that you get in the kingdom of heaven. It's too much for you, but it's, it, it's not too much for God to work through you. So if you, if you looked at that, God won't put more on me than we can bear. He puts a whole lot of love on you, and you can't bear it without him. You can't do it without him. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. And so, 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 so by having that in your head, you're saying, God, God, God won't. But see, if you, can handle, if you can handle everything yourself, why would you need God? If you can handle, if you, if, if, if you can handle, you know, if you're looking for God to give you everything that you can handle, he like, you don't need me. And so for you to believe that God won't put more on you that you can, you can bear. Who are you in the first place? God won't put more on me than I can bear. You ain't nobody to bear up anything in the first place. And you need God in order to uh, hold you up. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So that's number one. That's number two. What's my third one? Look at my third one. My third one is the idea of that statement. The idea of God can't, won't put more on me than I can bear. The idea of that statement, hallelujah, makes you believe, hallelujah, that everything that God gives you is enough for a human to handle. And when you think about it that way, it leaves no room for God that spoke about in Ephesians 3 and 20, that now unto him who was able to do exceedingly and abundantly and above all we can ask or think. Think about this. If, 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 if it's above what I can ask or I can think, then it's more than I can bear. Because I can't even ask for it or think about it. So if I can't even fit my mind to think about it or, or my mouth to ask for it, it's too much for me. That's why, that's why a lot of our, our prayers are too small. Hallelujah. I mean, and, and understand, we, 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 we do talk to God about the, the, the small things, but, 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 but we have to begin to see God in the big things. You have to begin to, you know, you know a lot of people can't, especially African American, you don't see God past your color. Well, a lot of black people don't do that. So what? He can do exceedingly and abundantly and above all, you can ask or think. Women don't, women don't do that. Well, it's time for you to ask God. You know, I used to talk about this, I, I talked about this in another sermon, you know, about when I was growing up, and, 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 and you know, the kids today would think of the, the Superman I grew up was corny. Hallelujah, you know, because compared to today, he is, he was. Hallelujah. But they used to say, hey, it looks like a job. Superman. This looks like a job for Superman. When you fit the, you know, you, you hit those roadblocks, you need to begin to say to yourself, this looks like a job for Jesus. 
Hallelujah. God, this looks like somebody who could do exceedingly and abundantly and above all I can ask or think. This looks like a job for Jesus. See, 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 that, that's what, what I'm saying is, is that when, when, when you can, when, when you, if you need to say something, don't say God won't put more on me than I can bear. You say this looks like a job for Jesus. Holly, because it's too much for me, but it ain't too much for him. Woo! I'm talking to somebody today. I'm talking to some. I don't know if you're in here or out there, but I'm talking to somebody today. Hallelujah. When you say God won't put more on you than, than you can bear, it leaves no room for Malachi 3 and 10. It leaves no room for when the word of God says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do this, says the Lord of heaven's army, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have room enough to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. Now understand something. If you won't have room enough, hallelujah, to take it in, it's too much for you to bear. That's too much for you to bear. I don't have no room for this. I don't have no, and, and, and you saying God won't put more on me than can bear. And when the Bible says he going to open up the windows of heaven, Pour you out a blessing. You won't have enough room for it. You don't have a, you, you can't think, you can't, he, you know, above all you can ask or think. Nobody's asking, but Lord, can you fill up three rooms of blessings for me? Can you open up the window? Can you, nobody asked that. That's too much for you to think about. That's too much for you to bear. But, but it's not too much for God. And since God promised it, I better be prepared for it. So I better stop talking about God won't put more on me than I can bear. I better hope he, he keeps his word. He said, put me to the test. He said, try me. So I should be expecting more than I can bear. But, I can, but if he give it to me, he's telling me, you can handle this. You walking around with, well, I got just enough, I just got, got it what I need, got just what I want in, got just what I want. What you wanted wasn't big enough. Woo, just accept what you got. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And finally, it, when you talk about God won't put more on me than I can bear, it leaves no room for Philippians 4 and 13. When the Bible says I can do everything through Christ, who gives me strength. Now can you do everything through Christ who gives you strength when you, when you work, you're talking about God can put too much on you. When the Bible says you can do everything. See, the thing is, if you're trying to do it through you, it's too much. If you do it through, through him, he gives you the strength that you need so it won't be unbearable. Woo! Hallelujah. Get that out of your mind if you're planning to live in the kingdom of heaven while you're down here on earth. Get that out of your mind. Stop letting old sayings and old uh, time thinking keep you from receiving everything that God has for you because you're living right. Now, if you're not living right, you just keep on begging and keep on asking, oh, Lord, please, oh, please, 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 please. What he like? You living right. And I promised you. What you begging for? It's like I got you. Didn't we agree to this? We agreed to this. I put it before you and you accept it. What you begging for? You see, the only reason somebody, uh, 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 you know, would, would, would change is because you broke the contract. Now you broke the contract, you could no longer expect to receive what you were supposed to get in the contract. And that's why you altering what you're saying. If it be thy will. What I say? I said if you choose life, I was going to bless you. If it be thy will. That, don't you, that's my word. I said what I was going to do. I said if you're tired, I was going to open up the windows of heaven. What you talking about? If it be my will. If you die, that be thy will. You know my word, you know my will. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, abundant life exists within the kingdom of heaven. If you're not experiencing it, you need to get to the kingdom of heaven. That's why we're going over the secrets. That's why, we're, that's why we're talking about the importance of it. Because the kingdom of heaven is the place that was designed down here for us to live, hallelujah, until, you know, until we, it was time for us to be called to go to heaven. 
I get so sick of people talking about, well, the, the, you know, the only, the only hell I'm going to experience is the hell down here on earth. And I'm have hell down here on earth and then I'm going to go to heaven. Guys, I ain't never, I ain't never said that. Stop repeating that. God said, I never, I never said that. He said, choose life, you're going to be blessed. He said, Jesus said, I came to give them life and life more abundantly. He said, enter the kingdom of heaven. He said, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Kingdom of heaven is here. Kingdom of heaven is for you who decided to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And if you're living beneath your privilege, as the old saints used to say, that's your fault. It's your fault. Woo! You got to understand something. We, we, we get, uh, again, we get to the kingdom of heaven and we operate in the kingdom of heaven and we receive the abundant life in the kingdom of heaven because we deliberately, hallelujah, uh, uh, live right. We deliberately live righteous. Being saved by accepting Jesus. See, see, a lot of this begins to make sense to me. But being saved by accepting Jesus does not, does not make you live right. And so, you know, people be like, yeah, you saved? I'm saved. You say, I'm saved. Praise the Lord. Hey, give me five. You saved? Oh, I'm saved. Now, here's another question. Are you living right? See, because being saved doesn't make you live right. That's deliberate action. I, I don't doubt you came to the altar. I don't doubt you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I don't doubt you was filled with the Holy Ghost. I don't, I don't doubt it. But the thing is, you have to now do something with what you received. You got to live right. And live right is not automatic because I accepted Jesus. Live right is deliberate. It's not automatic. See, the thing is, is that, uh, uh, look what Jesus said in, in John 3 and 3. I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is God's way of doing things. You get to see the God's way of doing things, but, but being born again doesn't make you do God's way of doing things in order to enter the kingdom of heaven. You get to see it. Yeah, I, I see it. I see prayer. I see fasting. I understand uh, uh, Holy Ghost. I, I, I see all of that, but I don't, I, none of that is make, make me do it. Well, thank you, Jesus. None of that is going to make me do it. I, got, I have that purpose in my heart that I'm going to live right. I'm going to purpose in my heart that I'm going to resist the temptations of, of the devil. And once I purpose it in my heart, I get the power of the Holy Spirit to do it. I, now understand something. I'm never alone in this thing. When I accept Jesus, I'm never alone. But I can, I, I can, I can walk as a loner. I could be a loner, but I'm never alone. I can try to do it all on myself, me, myself, and I. I can do this. I can handle this. You ain't praying. You ain't fasting. You're talking about what, what you're not going to do. I guarantee you, you're going to do it if you try to do it in yourself. I ain't smoking no more. I ain't drinking no more. Till the next time. Then you start saying it again. I ain't drinking no more. I ain't smoking no more. I ain't cussing no more. I ain't, I ain't fornicating no more. Till the next time. Because you're trying to, see, you have good intentions, but there's no deliberate. See, the Holy Ghost is the power that you need. It's not, I ain't, Holy Ghost, help me to not smoke anymore. Holy Ghost, help me to not drink anymore. Holy Ghost, help me, keep me. Hallelujah, keep myself till I get married. Holy Ghost, help me keep myself. Holy Ghost. See, now when you include the power, then now you have power behind your, your, what you want to do. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So, 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 so you're born again. You cannot see the kingdom of, of, of God. You have it. It equips you to live right again, but does it make you, does it make you live right? And here's a key. This is something I, I, I don't know about y'all, but I dealt with this. I struggled with this. Everything that you do or say is not right simply because you say. Well, I'm saved. You ain't saved. I'm, I'm, so you feel like you say anything? It, you can say and do anything because you save and it make it right. Everything you say and do is not right because you saved. It still has to line up with the word of God. Everything you say or do is not right simply because you have a position or a title. Where the pastor said it, where, I get, where the bishop, bishop said it. 
And that's Bishop. I mean, you can't override him. If he ain't talking the word of God, yeah, I can. So you, gotta, you have to understand who you are and where you're trying to go. I ain't trying to go to the church of God of Christ, high in the church of God of Christ, position, and I, not, well, you better, oh, the bishop said that, well, got, got to be right. The bishop did that, well, I, I mean, he the bishop, uh, y'all just go and let him, shh, shh, don't say nothing. Who are you? You ain't nothing but a peon in the seat. That's the bishop. If the bishop is wrong, the bishop is wrong. If the missionary is wrong, the missionary is wrong. If the pastor is wrong, the pastor is wrong according to the word of God. Now you need to have your scripture, but if you're wrong, you're wrong. If you alter the truth, you alter the way to the life. You can't afford to allow anyone to alter the truth because you're trying to get from the way to the life. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Kingdom of heaven is the only place prepared for God's people down here on earth. Every church, every denomination must be kingdom of heaven minded. Every church, every denomination, every, every Christian, every witness has to be kingdom of heaven minded. Where are you going? Kingdom of heaven down here. Why? Because I'm trying to get to heaven up there. Kingdom of heaven is the way to heaven. You can't, you can't get saved, live any old kind of way, and think you're going to heaven. Right? Hebrews, it ain't on here. If you, continually deliberate, if you deliberately continue sinning after coming to the knowledge of the truth, there is therefore now no sacrifice that will cover those sins. What was that, 10 and 26, April 10 and 26, something like that. We didn't gone over so much, it should be in your head. Deliberate sin cuts you off. Deliberately living right enters you in. Only those who do, do, do the will of my Father in heaven will enter into the kingdom of heaven. This word, this word, if you see this word begin intertwining and connecting like pieces to a puzzle in your head, you're like, okay, yes, yes. Oh, hallelujah. So let's look at this last, wait a minute, oh, praise the Lord. So, so our goal, again, I want to get to the kingdom of heaven. What's my goal? My goal is to understand the kingdom of heaven. We've been looking at all of these parables uh, dealing with the kingdom of heaven to find the secrets that Jesus hid in them because he said he hid secrets in the parables so that the disciplined ones can get it and the undisciplined ones will miss it. Now, why he did it that way, I have no idea. You have to ask him, but I, that's what he's told us that, that he did. And so look at this. This, 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 here's a parable of the vineyard workers. Matthew 21, uh, 20, 20, Matthew chapter 20. It says, for the kingdom of heaven is like, and it's, every time I see that, I want to understand what it's like, because I need to be there, I need to operate there, and I need to know what I'm supposed to be doing when I get there. He said, the kingdom is like the landowner who went out early morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay the normal daily wage and sent them out to work. As we look at this one and, 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 and as we compare it to our, 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 ourselves, you know, the, w, 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 you know, the ways that God has promised us, he said, choose life, you'll be blessed. That's what he promised us. He said, before your life and death, blessings and curses. He said, you know, you choose life, you can be blessed. And then he tells you how to do it. Love him, obey him, be totally committed to him. So it's time to go to work. He goes out, he finds some people, say, hey, it's time to go to work. You want to work? Okay, I agree to give you, uh, uh, I, I, you know, the normal daily wage. Again, for us, you want to come in right now? I, I agree to bless you. Praise the Lord. You want to be blessed? Yes. You want to choose life? Yes. Come on in. That's what we do. Right? So then he said, uh, uh, uh. In verse 3, at 9 o'clock in the morning, he was passing through the marketplace, and he saw some people standing around doing nothing. So he hired them, telling them he would pay them whatever was right at the end of the day. I'm going to pay you whatever, whatever, whatever is right. 
You heard the call to, to, to choose life. You didn't choose it. I'm coming back. You want to choose life? Yes, I'm ready to choose life. I'm going to pay you what's right. Set before you, I, I set before you life and death, blessings and curses. You want to choose life? Boom. I'm going to pay you what's right. Well, come on in. All right? God will never stop looking for people to come into his kingdom. The invitation is there until the invitation is no longer can be there. Matthew, look at, look at verse 5. So he went out again in the vineyard at noon and again at 3 and did the same thing at 6. And, and did the same thing at 5 o'clock that afternoon. And, 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 no, I'm sorry. And did the same thing at 3. At 5 o'clock that afternoon, he was in town again and saw some more people standing around. He asked, why haven't you been working today? Right? Represents the people late in life. Represents the people, you know, waiting to the last minute to get saved. Waiting for, you know, come in, hey, why, well, I mean, why, why you ain't been doing nothing all your life? I said, I tell you what, because nobody hired us. The landowner told them, go in and join the others in my vineyard. It's still time. Payday haven't arrived yet. It's still time. Come on in, come on in, come on in, come on in. He said that evening he told the foreman and called the workers and pay to pay them, beginning with the last workers first, uh, when, those, uh, when those hired at five o'clock were paid, each received a full day's wage. Understand, payday will always come in the kingdom. He used to sing, well, payday is coming after a while, put your time in. Payday is coming after a while. And I say, and I like that song. It's a song. But they say, put your time in. It don't say, put my time in. That's a song. That's just a song. I just I tell you what they're singing. That's just a song. Let's go back to the scripture. I want y'all, some of y'all be applying the song to your life. I'm, I'm trying to get you the scripture. He said, when those who's hired first came to get their pay, they assumed they would receive uh they were assumed they would receive more. He said, but, but they were paid a day's wage, uh, when, and, and so when they received their pay, they protested to the owner. Understand something. They've been working there all day, and they saw somebody come in at, and they're some nosy folk anyway. That, this, is, this is a teacher to, to mind your own business at your job. Don't worry about what anybody else is getting paid. Just make sure you're getting paid what you was promised. So they already in somebody else's business, see what they got paid, and now based upon what they have, I'm upset. When what, I, what, what, what they got, I mean, what, what I got was exactly what I was promised. I don't understand how you can be upset when you receive what you was promised. Okay, so look at this. See, look, look, look. They had nerve to say to the owner, those people worked only one hour, and yet you paid them just as much as you paid us who worked all day in the scorching heat. I mean, I, you know, we'll talk about this on Bible study, but do you think the man had a right to be upset? You know, I mean, you know, do you think he had a, do you think he had a right to be upset? Some of y'all will tell me about it, but, but, but understand, payday will always be what was promised and not determined by what somebody else received. Payday will always be based upon your contract. When you, when you get to your job, you say, you sign a contract. I plan to work this time to this time to receive this amount. That's the contract you, 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 you sign. That's the contract you're going to receive. You can't get upset when somebody else come in and they be like, well, no, I don't want to work those hours. I want to work less hours, but, and I want to make more money. And, and if that's what they negotiated and the boss said, okay, well, I want you that bad, you can work less time for more money. So now you look at it and be like, no, nah, I'm upset. But you signed your contract. That's the same thing they said about, you know, um, Scottie Pippen. Scottie Pippen, when we just watched that thing about Mike, uh, the, the, um, the last dance. Scottie Pippen signed a contract for, for like five, 10 million, was it? Something like 10 million, five, 10, it was, it was a low amount. 
Then other people was coming in, getting contract. I mean, for, and for like five years, and I, I don't know the exact thing, I'm gonna say like 10 million for five years. But other people was getting like 20 million for, for three years, uh, and, and, and big deals, and shoe contracts, and all that. And so Scotty Pippen was upset. And they said, Scotty, we told you don't sign the contract. That's not a good contract. And Scotty was like, well, my, my, I could get hurt. My parents need some money. You know, I, you know, it's a good deal for me right now. It's $10 million. It's $10 million. So, so, so Scotty Pippen signed that contract, and then Scotty Pippen got mad. When other people start getting, he start wanting more money. And they said, no, Scotty, you're going to you're gonna live out that contract. I told you don't sign it. I told you it wasn't a good deal. You signed it anyway, you're going you're gonna to work out this contract. So he's mad. And so what I'm saying, that's the same thing that's happening, that's happening here. The man went and got him at the beginning of the day. He said, you want to work? This is what I'm going to pay you? He said, sure, I will do it for that. He came in, he worked all day, worked hard. He saw a guy come in at one hour, only work one hour, and now he's upset with the owner. You see, you got to understand this. When you look at this in terms of the kingdom of, of God, you can be like Javon, and Javon worked from, 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 from 16, he's 16 years old. He in the church, he be in the church until he's 80 years old. He sees a friend of his get saved at 79. Well, his friend going to heaven. Javon can't be like, well, I've been working all this time in the kingdom of heaven, and you're telling me I ain't going to get more than him? That's what was on the table, Javon, from day one. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But you got to live a, you, oh, that, that, I mean, that, you got to live a life. You got to live, you got to live a, you, know, you don't know what that man went through for them 79 years. He was living in hell. You got a chance to live as close as you could to God while you was here on, heaven, on earth. So you can't look at, the reward, you got to look at what you were able to do. Oh, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Look, 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 look what he said. Look what the man said. He answered him. He said, he answered one. He said, friend, I, I, I haven't been unfair. Didn't you agree to work all day for the usual wage? He said, take your money and go. I, I wanted to pay the last worker the same as you. Is it against the law for me to do what I want to do with my money? No, it ain't against the law for you to <laughs> He said, he said, should you be jealous because I'm kind to other people? See, that's the thing. You got people that's jealous of you because you're kind to somebody else, forgetting that if, if, if you weren't the type of person that you are, then you wouldn't have been kind to them. But you got people that want you to treat other people bad because they want you to, not because of who you are. But, but it's because of who I am that you got what you got. He could have got to the end of the day and paid him less. What was he going to do? But because I'm the, I'm the type of man that I am, I paid you what I promised you. But don't you try to dictate to me what I should do to others. You don't try to dictate to me the kindness that I show to other people. He said, that's my money. I do what I want to do. That's my time. I do what I want to do with it. He don't tell me what I could do. He said, God is faithful to do what he promises and doesn't need our suggestions. God, if I was you, I'd just blow him up right now. God, if I was you, I, would just, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't allow him to go to the kingdom of heaven. With all the stuff he did to me, just simply accepting Jesus, that ain't good enough. So you want to dictate punishment. You want to dictate what, what, what you think other people should get. Just like, uh, 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 who was that? That wasn't Job, that was that Noah, not, well, Jonah. Jonah trying to dictate what the people of Nineveh should get to God because he didn't like them. It's the same thing. You can't dictate to God how he should judge other people. You just better be glad he's going to give you what he promised to give you. Oh, hallelujah. He said, he said, uh, look at this, look at, look, look at, look at this. I want to show you something in, in Romans. Because some of us will say, that, well, that's just not fair. It's not fair that, 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 that I did all of this and I do all of this and they just come, Johnny come lately, and they get the same thing that I got. That's not fair. Romans 9, 14 to 16. Are we saying then that God is unfair? Of course not. For God said to Moses, I will show mercy to anybody I choose. And I will show compassion to anyone I choose. 
So, so it's God who decides to show mercy. We can neither choose it nor work for it. You can't, you can't choose it, you can't work for it. And you can't tell God what to do to somebody else just because you don't like them. God, by the way, I ain't trying to tell you what to do, but if it was me, I wouldn't let them in the kingdom of heaven. Kind of like uh, uh, that, 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 that person that went to heaven and then they, um, they come to heaven and, and they saw, saw Peter at the gate and said, you know, Peter, I'm ready to get into heaven. And he said, he said, he said all right, well, you got to pass the test. He said, what's the test? You got to spell a word. What's the word? The word is who? Who? That's good. W-H-O. All right, you go in. Peter said, okay, wait a minute. I got I to go do something real quick. You understand how to do this test? You understand this? I want you to do the test for the next person to see in. Come in. Next person to say come in was, 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 was somebody that, 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 that she couldn't stand. What? They made it to heaven? Oh, gone it. Hey, 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 how you doing? I'm, I'm, I'm good to see you. Well, you, gotta, you, you made it to heaven. You got to come in. You got to pass the test. Well, what kind of test? You got to spell the word. All right, what's the word? Saskatchewan. You got an easy word. You're going to try to make it hard for somebody else to get in. Oh, hallelujah. We don't want to be that person. We don't want to be that person. We don't want to be the person trying to, trying, to, trying to hinder somebody else's blessing. We don't want to be that person trying to be jealous uh, uh, of somebody else's blessing. And, and you're so jealous of what they're receiving, you can't appreciate what you have. You can't even appreciate what you, you were standing at the corner with no job. Now at the end of the day, you're about to have your pockets full and now your lip is turned up. Based upon, not, not because you didn't get what you was promised, because you upset about what somebody else received. I got to be speaking to somebody because, see, this is one of the things that Jesus is saying, you can't have this in the kingdom of heaven. You can't have jealousy in the kingdom of heaven. You cannot be jealous about what your brother or what your sister have within the kingdom, hallelujah, and you feel like they shouldn't have. And so you're upset with what you do have. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Look at, look at, look at Isaiah 55, 7 and 9. Uh, the, 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 the word of God says, let the wicked change their ways and banish the very thought of doing wrong. Let them turn to the Lord that, that, that he may have mercy on them. Yes, turn to our God for he will forgive generously. My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord, and my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. We, you got to understand that. You got to understand, look, you can't expect God to do things your way. You can't expect God to bless your way. You can't tell God how he should bless you and how he should bless other people. That's what's wrong with people trying to tell you what you're going to get when you get back home if you do a certain thing. Everybody spin around on one leg and what you going, you going, when you get back home, everything going to be turned around. It's like, you can't, you, they can't tell you, you can't tell God what's God going to do, and neither can they. You can, you, God says, I will bless you, but, 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 you know, you can't choose how you're going to be blessed. He says he's going to open up the windows of heaven, but you can't choose what's coming through them. You choose life, and we choose to be blessed, but we don't choose the blessings that we get. And you certainly can't choose the blessing that somebody else gets. And you certainly should not be jealous of what somebody else has. And so we go back to Matthew 20 and 16, and the Word of God says this. It says, so those who are last now 
will be first then. And those who are first will be last. And it wasn't until I put this in perspective of the kingdom of heaven that I began to understand what this meant. First be last and last, you know. It, 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 the first will be, look, the, the, the last will be first to judgment because the last will have the, most, ha, have the most forgiven and the least accomplished. The last will be first because they will have the most that needs to be forgiven and the least that will have been accomplished for God in their lives because you're the last. You got the most to be forgiven and the least to be accomplished. We ain't got to spend a whole lot of time on you. That's why the last is first. And the first is last because the first should have a, 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 a lot of well done's in there. A lot of well, well done. Well done. I said, you know, well done. Well done, not good and faithful servant. Well done. Let's look through your life. Well done. The last, all it is, is, whoo, you better be glad you got in here. You better be glad you got, look at all this you did. Praise the Lord. Glad you accepted the Lord. Come on in. I don't know about you, look, the, 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 the last should be first and the first should be last. I want to be one of the first that's last. I want, I want to be one of the last, the guy that spent some time on me. I want to hear the well done, that good and faithful servant. I want, it, I want him to go through it. I don't, want to, I, I don't want to be the one to say, hey, hey, God, wait, wait, but I did this and I did that. You ain't even, I don't even know, you didn't even know me. And I don't even know you. He give me that. I want him to, I want him to spend some time on me. Yeah, look at this. Yeah. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Look at this. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Look at this. Well done, my good and faithful servant. I want him to spend some time on me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Don't let the quantity, the, 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 don't let the quantity you give make you believe that you deserve more. I'm this and I'm that. I know I, you know, I deserve this and I deserve that. Don't, don't, don't let the quantity make you believe you deserve more. Hallelujah. Thank you. Don't, don't, make, the, don't, don't, you know, don't make the choice. Hallelujah that you made confuse you. Understand the agreement that you made. I don't care what position, and I, and I keep saying this, I don't care what position, what title. Understand the, the agreement you made. You said, I chose life. I chose blessings. Hallelujah. I, I chose to live. When you choose life, you choose to live the life. When you choose God, you choose to love him, obey him, and be totally committed to him. I didn't, I didn't choose to be compared to other people. I didn't choose to, to, for God to say, for God, look at me and look at them. Why should I, shouldn't I get more than them? God is like, I'm not your parents. I'm not your, I'm not, I'm not somebody, I'm not people in the world. That's how people in the world judge you. God said, I judge you based upon my word and my promises. And it, and, and, it, and, it, and it bodes you well to, do, to, to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven and not the least. Because that would make people be, think, well, you know what, well, if, if I'm going to get the same as them, then maybe I'll be that one that just waits to the, to the last hour. But you don't know when the last, see, the thing is, you don't know when the last hour is going to be. In that scenario, he came back three, four, five, whatever. But you don't know he's coming back to five. And think about the ones who, who, who didn't wait till he came back and went home. I mean, that's a lot. I mean, when you put that through the kingdom of, uh, 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 of heaven, you think about that, there are a lot of people that, 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 that have missed the opportunity and never got a second one. Come on, we're standing.